Yeah, but uh, believe me, it's short. You know, without you realizing it, Ramadan is here. So yeah, let's prepare ourselves for Ramadan as our family. And sometimes we plan to you know, have uh, Ramadan activities as usual, um, the, the Tarawih and etc. However, we are still thinking about it. Inshallah, we, we, we plan to have it too, but uh, it really depends on the situation. Um, oh, uh, second announcement is um, mask donation. We are running low on mask. So if you would like to donate mask, uh, please you know, bring it to the masjid and then just put it there at the corner where you can put it on, on, on top of the table itself. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Present on this day. 
And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making us from amongst the greatest of all ummahs, the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we look at today's society, if we look at the situation of today's world, we find that in every single corner there is chaos. In every single corner there is fasad. In every single corner there is evil. And us as Muslims, we ask ourselves, how did we, being the flag and torchbearers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, being the ones who carry his legacy, being from the greatest ummas of all time, how did we allow the world to become in such a situation? And we look at one of the many causes to this, and we see that there are no true representatives of Islam in today's time. And upon hearing that, many of you will say, we have scholars, we have leaders, we have people that we trust and that we follow. But how many of us ask, what is the intention behind those who lead? And what is the connection between those who lead and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And what is the understanding of those who lead and the power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a very beautiful title in the Quran. Khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. The best of mankind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put on this earth. But how many of us live up to the expectation? And many of us, upon taking in the situation and seeing what goes on in this world, we ask a question that has been asked many times by many people before us. Mata Nasrullah. There are people in Kashmir who are dying as I speak. There are people in Yemen who are starving as I speak. There are people in Palestine who are being occupied as I speak. Mata Nasrullah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's answer to this question, Ala inna Nasrullah al Do you not believe, do you not understand, do you not know that the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always near? But what is it? And why is it that we sit and question where is the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because when we question, that means that there is doubt in our hearts. In today's khutbah, my goal is to align and to allow all of us to understand when and where the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes. How do we make ourselves deserving of the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The first of examples is the best of any example that can be given, and that is the example of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We all know that in the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was tested with many trials and tribulations. But every single time, because of his tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah not only helped him, but he elevated him. We look at the battle of Hunayn, a battle that comes after the Muslimin have won in the battle of Badr. And they had partial success in the battle of Bahad. And so many battles before have allowed them to build confidence. And now the day of Hunayn comes and the Prophet Muhammad has a massive army compared to what they usually have. To the point that some of the Sahaba say, Lam nukhlam al yawm in qibla. Today, there is no way that we will lose from the amount of people that we have, from the vast size of this army, from the plethora of Muslimin. But we know how this battle ended. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, بَعْدَ عُوْضُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَيَوْمَ حُنَيْنِ And on the day of Hunayn, on the battle of Hunayn, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed you to have such a plethora, such a large amount of people, but it served you or gave you 
no victory. إذ أعجبتكم كثرتكم فلم تغن عنكم شيئا وضاقت عليكم الأرض بما رحبت ثم وليتم مدبرين. الله سبحانه وتعالى says that even though the army of the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم was so vast and they covered so much of the ground. They were made to feel as if they were in a tight space, meaning what fear came into their hearts. And almost every single soldier of the Prophet Muhammad deserts him. And he's left with a very small amount of believers in front of the disbelievers. And what happens? The disbelievers begin to laugh and mock the Prophet Muhammad Oh Muhammad, you say that you came as a mercy to mankind. You say that you came to bring this message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You say that you came to align the hearts. You say that you came to expel darkness and to bring light. But look at you today when your own soldiers have deserted you. Look at you today when nobody stands beside you. Look at you today when we are the one with the large army and you are the one with the small group of people. And the Prophet Muhammad responds, Al-Nabiyyu Without any doubt, I am the Prophet of, of the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be there 50 people, or 1,000 people, or 5,000 people. I stand here in front of you, not because of who stands behind me, but because I serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down peace and tranquility into the heart of the Prophet Muhammad. And then into the hearts of those who believed and stood next to him. And he didn't just cause the disbelievers to lose. What did he do? He sent down an army that's better than a thousand or ten thousand or fifty thousand men. An army of angels. And with that army of angels, he punished the disbelievers. He decimated the army of disbelievers. متى نصر الله ألا إن نصر الله قريب. We ask where is the help of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, not knowing that it's in our right and in our left hands. Simply by having tawakkul in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, we invoke His help. On that same day, another scene. We have one of the greatest warriors of all time, Khalid bin Walid. His army, his group, has also deserted him. And he stands surrounded by 40 ghulam from the tribe of Tay, 40 strong men. And this tribe, they were known to be from amongst the strongest. They were compared to the size of the people of Adam and Thamud. And so they surround Khalid and they tell him, Ya Khalid, Ya Sayyidullah, people fear you. People run the opposite way in the battlefield when they see you. But today we outnumber you 40 to 1. And so we give you two choices. Leave this religion of Islam. Take away support from this Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Denounce your belief in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and we will allow you to live. You see the mountain on our right of Salma, we will give you refuge. You see the mountain of, on the left of Aja, we will allow you to run. And what does Khalid respond? لا إلى سلمى ولا إلى أجا ولكن إلى الله الملتجى حسبي الله وكفى. I refuse to run to the Mount of Salma and I refuse to take refuge in the Mount of Aja. Instead, I put my trust in Allah سبحانه وتعالى and He is the one who will suffice and protect me. And at that moment, غبار, a sandstorm, fills the eyes of the disbelievers and one by one Khalid al-Walid decimates them. 
Final example. In the Battle of Badr, there's an authentic hadith narrated by Amr al Khattab. He says that a Sahaba comes running to the Prophet on the battlefield. And he says, Ya Rasulullah, I was in pursuit of one of the disbelievers. He took me through the battle lines. I chased him, zigzag. And at a point, he got far away from me, and I'm still chasing him. And out of nowhere, I see that he falls on his face. When I reach him, I turn him over, and I see he has a scar from his temple to his rib on the right side. And I panic. I freak out. I don't understand what's happening. Nobody touched him, but there he lies dead. The Prophet ﷺ tells him, لا تخف. ذاك مدد من السماء الثالثة. Have no fear. That is a help, that is an angel, that is a warrior that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent from the third heaven. مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ أَلَا إِنَّ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ قَرِيمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells in the Quran, إِنْ تَنْصُرُ اللَّهَ يَنْصُرُكُمْ وَيُثَبِّتْ أَقَدَامَكُمْ We hear this statement, إِنْ تَنْصُرُ اللَّهِ If you give aid to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then He will give you aid. And we ask ourselves, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala need our aid? Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala need our help? Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala need our effort? And we see in another place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us, مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يُقْرِضُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا فَيُضَعِفُ لَهُ أَضْعَافًا كَثِيرًا Who would like to give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a good loan so that He can multiply for him? Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala need from our wealth? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala desires and wants to see from us our effort. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala desires and wants to see from us our tawakkul, our trust in Him. How can I ask, why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow for people in Kashmir to be killed, and for children in Yemen to starve, and for our brothers and sisters in Palestine to be oppressed? when I have not made any effort, when I have not made any dua, when I have not made a step forward besides running my mouth. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He makes us from amongst those who understand that His help is always near. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَاءِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ We hear these examples, and to many of us, it sounds like a fairy tale. To many of us, it sounds like something that could never happen in the 21st century. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send angels down to aid those who are in need. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send down something miraculous. And none of us can imagine. And we have this belief, we have this way of seeing things out of weakness of Iman. We doubt the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And many of you, upon hearing what has been stated in the first khutbah, you will ask, how do we invoke the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How do we help our brothers and sisters who are being oppressed? How do we find leaders who are not from amongst the people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says يَقُولُونَ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ مَا لَيْسَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ They say with their mouths that which is not in their hearts. There's a beautiful hadith where Sahaba of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu says قَعِبْنَا نَفْرًا مِنْ أَصْحَابِ رَسُولِ صَلَى اللَّهَ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَتَذَاكَرْنَا وَقُلْنَا لو نعلم أي الأعمال أقرب إلى الله لعملناه فأنزل الله عز وجل بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبح لله ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لم تقولون ما لا تفعلون 
كبر مقتا عند الله أن تقولوا ما لا تفعلوا إن الله يحب الذين يقاتلون في سبيله صفا كأنهم بنيان مرصوص A group of Sahaba is sitting with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one of them asked, Ya Rasulullah, if there was one action that could bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we only knew we would do it. And before the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can respond, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends them wahi upon him. That everything in the heavens and the earth praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is the mighty and the wise. O oh, you who believe, why is it that you make claims that you would do so and so when you have no plan of following through? Indeed, it is greatly hated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a believer to make a statement, to say he would do something or she would do something when he has no intention of doing so. What is loved or beloved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or will bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is striving and struggling and fighting in his path, united. And the example of buildings, of structures joined together with no gaps in between is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives. So this is one of the answers to many for the question that you will ask of how do we evoke the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How do we help our brothers and sisters who are being oppressed? How do we help ourselves in our communities when we are weak in Iman and we are weak in understanding of Islam? It begins with unity. It begins with loving the person who is sitting next to you only and solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It begins with trusting and understanding Everybody has a plan. Every oppressor has a thought or an idea or an ideal and a goal that he or she wants to achieve. And they plan and they will continue to plan to the day of judgment. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has planned and will plan and he is the best of all planners. And in the end, it is his plan that will be successful. But we will not, we cannot gain anything. We cannot gain the upper hand. If when I hear somebody say that, you know what, this and this happened to them, Palestine, and instead of immediately making dua, instead of immediately asking, oh Allah, help those people, oh Allah, strengthen those people, oh Allah, give me the ability to help them, whatever matter, I say, you know what, that's true. But in my country, so and so has happened. What was so special about the Prophet Muhammad What made him the best man to ever walk on this earth? That he was the most selfless human being to ever exist. He had no personal vendettas. He had no selfish connections. He never put himself before anything or anyone. And because of that, he became the best human being to ever walk on the face of the earth. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He makes us from amongst those who truly implement the understanding of Deen. I cannot tell you how many people come and they say, the situation that I see of Muslimi, the situation that I see of Islam today saddens me simply because of our disunity. We have masajid that associate with only one people from one place that speak one language. And if we look at the time of the Prophet Muhammad and we see how his masjid was formed and we see all of the Sahaba who were present we will understand that Islam is truly and only about unity. And that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that He has made us from different tribes and different nations of different colors and different shades. 
And then he continues and he tells us something beautiful. إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مَا أَتْقَاكُمْ That the best in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not the person who has any physical attribute, who has any physical ability. Rather, it is the one who is closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his piety. Rather, it is the one who is the most aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his everyday life. And so we ask, why is it that the world is in the situation that it is today? We ask, why the Muslimin are always the underdogs? We ask, why is it that our brothers and sisters are constantly and consistently being oppressed? We ask, and we ask, and we ask. And we forget to look within ourselves. We forget to look within our communities. We forget to look at those who we appoint as our leaders and we follow. And the worst of all, we forget to look at the example that was left by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and by the lessons that were taught to us by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in Quran. And so the message that I leave all of you with today is turn to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and turn to the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you will not feel doubt, you will not feel small in number, you will not feel weakness. Because the day that we as Muslimin unite, the day that it hurts me to see somebody being put down or oppressed from another place, from another country, from another zip code, the day that it hurts me to see that happen to somebody as much as it hurts me to see it happen to my own family or to my own neighbor or to my own countrymen, then we will see that the Ummah unites. We will see that we become as strong as we once were before. And we will see that there is no way for us to be divided, or for us to be conquered, or for us to be oppressed, or for us to be harmed. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He unites us, that He unites every single heart, and He joins every single heart in the Muslim Ummah, as He has united us and joined us today in this masjid. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gathers us in front of Him on Yom al Jumu'ah. In Jannah al Firdaus al A'la, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He protects us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He elevates us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that every single oppressed soul on this earth is given freedom. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that every sick soul on this earth is given shifa, is given healing. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that every lost soul on this earth is given guidance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that every lost soul on this earth is given guidance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that every lost soul on this earth is given guidance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not bring animosity and hate and jealousy between the hearts of the Muslims. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He does not allow animosity and hate and jealousy between the hearts of the Muslims. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He protects us from the plots of shaitan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He protects us from the plots of those who work with shaitan. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He protects us from the plots who do not fear Him. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وأقيموا الصلاة